Let's start with the, with the song. What is your song, the one that lifts you? Um, well, I've, I'm a big music fan. Um, I love to listen to a lot of music, but if I need to pick a song that um, that got me at one point, it must be Coldplay, uh, Viva La Vida. Um, there was a, a period when I had surgery on my appendix and was in the hospital, and it was a very, very, very tough time, and I just put the TV on, I remember, and uh, yeah, the song came on, and it was it was an emotional moment, and I don't know, it just it just got me, and, and obviously, and still in my mind. It's magic what music does for you. Three minutes and a half of a song like that, all of a sudden your your yeah. mind changes completely. Is that what it felt like? It does, yeah, definitely. And uh, also, it's special that if you hear that song now, you're gonna think about you know the the tough moments that then as well, and how how good it is right now, and you know how proud you can be. And um, I think music is is very important part of, of my life. Yeah. That was, you, you said it very quickly, but that was a, a time where you were in hospital for, was it 12 days, you lost two yeah. stones? Yeah, I was in hospital for 13 nights, I think, or something like that. And it was uh, it was very, very tough. It was a complicated um, appendix. And um, there were so many things that, you know, went on. Um, I had, a, I think, a, um, Infection uh, in my in my, tum in, in my in my stomach as well, and yeah, it was it was uh, it was crazy if you think about it, and, and it all happened on the on the first of April two thousand twelve, and so the date doesn't uh, you know really help either. How old were you? I think I was um, two thousand twelve, so there must I don't know I was twenty one maybe. Yes. Yeah, oh, so so your career had started. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, so I was I was like in obviously I'm uh, probably one of my best periods at FC Groningen and we were supposed to be playing um, the derby they called FC Groningen against Heerenveen and I was feeling sick and um, a lot like uh, but I, I didn't eat too healthy over there either so it was obviously my own fault but um, yeah it was uh, it was it was a tough tough two weeks before I obviously got surgery and after that was even harder I guess the the toughest thing at that point is at 21 you're invincible you are on your way, up, your way up. Everybody's talking about you and the way you play, and all of a sudden you find a weakness in your arm. Was that was that the shock that you could actually be that weak at that point in your life? I was definitely in shock, but obviously it went it went in the end pretty quick. Obviously, in the hospital was it was uh, it was very hard. Thirteen days, I couldn't do anything for at least ten days, and um, couldn't walk. And I remember when I started walk for the first time, I did ten meters, and I was. <laughs> breathing like crazy and um but after that i think after a month i started training early with the, with with the physios and um trying to get my muscles back and everything and after that i had, I played a full season and i think the the season after i went to celtic when when you came in i've asked many people about about you and your arrival and i'm i'm sure you know you carry with you that that's something yeah. that uh, that you're comfortable with, I guess, that leadership qualities. Uh, and tell us how you implemented it into the changing room of, of Liverpool. Well, first of all, I think you, you always need to be yourself and um, being myself is always, you know, saying what I think. Um, I'm pretty relaxed and easy outside of the pitch. Um, but on the pitch, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we're going to do everything that's possible to win the game. I want to make it easy for myself, and that's on up on my position is to make sure everyone is organized and doing their job, uh, including myself, obviously. <laughs> but I think it's just like I need to. I know myself, and I need to be uh, vocal. I need to be busy. I need to be, you know, shouting. And and even if I shout too much, I don't mind. And players know it uh, now as well. Sometimes I can shout, you know, things that people already know, but. I'd rather just be, be you know, alive and yeah, make sure everyone is uh, is is at it, and um, that's just something I've I think I've learned over the over the years, and and I know that it it can work. If it, I feel it's crucial when you walk into a changing room for the first time, and the second time, and mm -hmm. the third time at the beginning, because of course you you carry all that with you, yeah. but you need to just first 
look around and see what's going on, no, and uh, and then see, oh right, that's that's the guy I have to be close to. That's the guy that I have to look after. <laughs> do you do you analyze the situation like that? Obviously, like I've 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 spoken before I, I went I went to Liverpool. I spoke with with Hendo because we have the same agent. I spoke with Genie. Um, I know Robo because I've played against him in in Scotland. Uh, I know Sadio, so I know I, kn I knew a couple of players, and that was a little bit easy. And I think the most imp most important thing that helped me a lot was um, I came on the on basically on the first when when they played Burnley. Um, I trained in the morning with a couple of guys, and then the day after I did a an, an, a session with the players who didn't play against Burnley. The day after we prepared the game against Everton and we played Everton and after Everton we went to Dubai and that helped me a lot. Um, I got to know the players, you know, outside of the pitch straight away. Uh, we had a couple of sessions there and, you know, that helped me straight away. And obviously you still need to, I think the most important thing is to show it on the pitch, to earn your respect there and be yourself outside of the pitch. And I think it went pretty fluent and just went yeah you re remember a moment perhaps where you thought like right i've clicked i won't say it to anybody but now i feel i found my place in in the team. I, I think that's 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 difficult to say but i think it went like in the beginning of the the first couple of games i mean, i had to you know get used to the way of playing get used to um the intensity of the way we play the high line the sometimes risk as well if th that you that we take in defending and press and pressing and um, I think it must be maybe in April when I you know had everything under 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 control basically and obviously the Champions League final the road to the Champions League final helped as well and um, I felt just you know great. I won't say any secret now because you said Henderson shares the same agent as you and he was every day, you have to get this guy, you have to get this guy. You obviously knew that and uh, Henderson was saying, we're doing everything we can. <laughs> Did it go like that? Well, obviously, like, when we, when you, when you speak with each other and, uh, you know, there is interest, obviously, you, you can't change the fact that, you know, it is what it is, basically, you know, situation was how it is and um, after... Um, the end of August, um, I, I put my head down and just played for Southampton and, and gave everything and, and was happy to play as well because I came back from an eight-month injury. Um, obviously, when everything happened over the summer, like you know, people kind of kind of doubt you right, basically for um, the way you play. And, uh, and for me, I, I, I really didn't care. I was just happy to play. I gave everything, every training, every day, and nobody could even question me. Um, around me and um, and when when it was December and I got a call from from Les Reed and they said they you know get, they got the deal done basically and I was able to talk to to Liverpool I was obviously very happy and it went pretty quick after that and yeah just very proud moments obviously as a Dutch person somebody who loves football you knew what Liverpool was about but uh, I heard that uh, you went to the Cardiff Champions League final the Real Madrid uh, Juventus final yeah. And you came across some Liverpool fans. There. Yeah, it was pretty special though because obviously, like, I would never. Well, before that, I would never go to a Champions League final, um, and this time I went with my best friend, and um, we thought like, let's go, let's just enjoy it, and we went there, and we had great seats um, sorted through the agency, and there were a lot of Liverpool fans coming to me and and uh, coming to me and saying, you know. We, that we have to sign for them, and <laughs> so it was. It was. It was. It was obviously a great gesture and great. It was nice, and they were all respectful. And um, yeah, it was. It was a great day. Tell us about your best friend, because I, I think there's always time for a little much for those that have been with you for a long time, and those will be the first ones you call to when you need to, and <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing. So, who, who is your best friend? So my best friend' his name is Ludi, um, and he's he's been there since since day one, and. Um, He's always he's always ready whenever I need him, and um, he's gonna he's gonna be a dad soon. So I'm very happy for him, and yeah, he's been there through everything basically. He's always, um, you know, what I say, if 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 I if I need him, he's there, and if 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 he needs me, I'm there for him as well. And I think that's very important in life, and uh, 
other than that, I, I keep a very, very, very small circle around me because I'm not a um, big fan of uh, keeping a lot of people in, into my life. Has all, that always been the case? Because I, I guess when you start going up your circle, there's a lot of people pushing in and trying to show, yeah. you know, get in. Did you see that happening straight away? No, but I think I think um, I think as as bigger you get as a player or bigger team you're gonna play for, or there's more um, more spotlight on you. I think a lot of people that you ever met or seen once or twice, they want to come into your life again and they want to be there and 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 um, yeah, be around you basically because you're in the spotlights and. They'll they will leave as well when you're out of the spotlight. So I know I know how it is in the, in our life we live, and um, I'm pretty. I don't know how you say it, but I'm pretty. Um, I can see through those things, and um, I have a, a fantastic wife. They can see through those things as well. Lodi, you, you knew him when he was what. Uh, 13 yeah 12 like 13 yeah so you'll you'll go to his house knock the door so come on let's go for a walk yeah at uh, the streets of Breda. <laughs> Breda yeah what, what were the streets like they, they were very, they were great um we played a lot of football on the, on the crife courts um those are obviously fantastic for uh, for all the neighborhoods in in, in holland and uh, we had a lot of you know small-sided games tournaments with a lot of great players that played for you know knock Breda. Willem II. Uh, those are courts that Johan Cruyff uh, financed or had yeah. a foundation that they financed. And they're all over the world, but yeah, a lot of yeah. them in... In Holland, yeah. Almost every every city got at least one. And um, I know that we have maybe now three, but we had two um, in, in Breda. And yeah, it's, it, it was, it's just great because, um, for example, on a Sunday when obviously everyone is off, you, you, you went maybe in the morning to church and then in the afternoon... Um, you did a five five side game if you had a team, and yeah, you know, sometimes there were seven teams or eight teams, and then you played. Obviously, there were two teams playing, and if you if you lost, you have to go out. If if you win, you stay on, and it was it was very tough, hard work. Sometimes fighting, sometimes you know crying, and yeah, and and it was just um, it's, it was just much much better than it is right now. I think because I don't see a lot of you know kids playing on the streets anymore and I think that's a bit uh, bit sad to see. I'm going to ask you for a TV show that uh, you follow, like, know the characters and, you know, know everything about it or enjoy so it. So I'm a big TV uh, show guy. Um, but I'm going to say Prison Break, a big fan. Mm -hmm. um, Games of Thrones, mm -hmm. big fan. But also like old school, I don't know if you know it. Is this is like a, I don't you call it sitcom? I think it calls is from uh, Martin, Martin Lawrence. You know the actor. Know he had his own like it was probably 1991 or something. But I watched it all back and it's just funny stuff. And um, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a big TV show guy. But what I would say I would say Prison Break because I watched it eight times all over again. Right, you should have chosen Game of Thrones because that's what you told me before. Yeah. And I've got a lot of questions. Yeah, well, Game of, we pick Game of Thrones. Let's pick up yeah. Game of Thrones then. Have you got a favorite character there? Uh, let's just say Jon Snow. Do you, you, you know read nothing it, Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. You, you oh. know. Nothing Jon Snow must be the best quote of the whole. Yeah. And the relationship with Ygritte yeah. must be the, the, one of the best love stories of, uh, of all time in television, you reckon? It must be definitely. I think you know. In total, the the way the show is set up, um, like I, I remember started it. I think it was two years ago, like from the first season. Everyone said before that you have to watch, you have to watch mm -hmm. it, and I didn't watch it. I thought you know it's science fiction, like you know it's not real. So I thought ah it's nothing, but then I just give it a go, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching it. And obviously, I'm waiting now. Uh, for the new season. And the last one. And the last one. Uh, one of the attractions of the series is that it's politically is very incorrect. Mm -hmm. So the the ones that are marginalized, they get even more marginalized. Yeah. The the bodies succeed. Yeah. Uh, is that one of the attractions of Definitely. The I think I think even in the in the in the first season, like when you um when obviously like sometimes in series you have like characters that stays in the series for like forever and 
um, like in the first season, I think they, they behe beheaded the king straight away. And I was like, wow, what? no, he's going to be in this. Uh, he's, so I was a bit like, wow. And after that, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And um, yeah, what you said, you know, it's, it's just a special series, I think. You know. if, you, if you look out, I know that we're talking about leaders and real world. If, if you look out into the world, what, what, what do you see right now? Well, um, I see a lot of things changing, um, like the way people think, um, how big an influence social media has. I think that's unbelievable, and I think it's pretty sad to see, uh, on my point of view, uh, because it's basically a fake life, what people, some people live, and that's that's what my uh, opinion is on that. But I think we. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's difficult to say that, that what was exactly you know different, but I think we have to um, be much more nicer to each other. If I ask you for a person you haven't met, yeah, I think you, we're gonna go back to the '90s on television yeah. in a minute because it is Will Smith. Will yeah, Smith. Will Smith. I said Will Smith because um, he looks like a, a great great character a great dad um but yeah most of all he has you know he's enjoying life he's he's and he's very smart i think as well and i would love to have i don't know just a chat with him and get you know inspiration or tips or anything you know about anything and um i think he's a great actor as well definitely he went through so he was one of the top actors in the world, and then he went through a period where he started doing blockbusters, and he admitted himself that he was a little bit broken. He wasn't fulfilled by the things that he was doing, even though he was super famous. Yeah. I don't know if you were aware of that, but that is the other side of fame as well. You, you yeah, I know that you see it a lot. I think you see it a lot with fame, you know, that some people find it very, very difficult to, you know, handle. And, you know, that's it is difficult to handle. You need to be mentally very strong you need to be you know the criticism sometimes you get you need to be so strong for it and um and for him obviously like so many people are watching his films shows what else and there's so many attention especially in america on on, on actors and um you need to be unbelievable strong and i can't imagine the pressure basically he's he's living on and especially back in in, in the days and um we have a lot of pressure but they got a little bit more if they really are hot as as actors and, and but you have to be strong definitely did you get to him via the prince of l.a or did you see him first in the movies and then i think uh the prince of bel-air must, how, how, must by the way, i don't know it's just like 28 i mean this, I happened, this was like yeah it's probably years ago. yeah it's probably <laughs> 1991 as well when i was born and I don't know. It, it, I, I just seen it on. It was always on 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 TV. Um, you know, twenty five minutes of episode. I think it was, and I just enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, it's just like it's a it's a it's a great show and a lot of fun things. A lot of um, yeah, great moments and and the way he does it and and the way. He, X is just it's just great. He actually was an actor that didn't seem like an actor. It was it seemed like a guy having fun. Yeah, on, on just a doing, show. being who he is exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's how we play that role as well exactly, and that what makes him in the show as well. I think. Yeah. Right. Uh, actually, he this she does say a quote that if you don't mind me sharing with you, money and success don't change people; they merely amplify what is already there. Do you recognize that too? I th I think so. Yeah, um, money doesn't change me, for example. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th I, th I, th I definitely think he's right in in that case. And um, so, when 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 did you have your first big wage, and what do you remember of that moment? Well, big wage. So basically, what I said, I, I I signed my first contract when I went to FC Groningen. So I, I was a bit late, um, and. Um, I don't know when I when I got the first one. You know the funny thing was when I went to Groningen, I didn't have my driving license, and so I was I think I was twenty when I went to Groningen and or nine. I don't even know. I can't even remember <laughs> now. But 
so I came there with no driving license and I had to take the bike to training every every day because I was training with under 23s and um, nobody around me uh, was training with under 23s. They were always training with the first team. So I had to take the bike. So I, I think my money went to um, driving lessons and make sure that I'm going to get the driving uh, driving license. So I think that's that must be the, f the first thing that probably comes to my mind. And when... when did, did you ever think like, oh my God, I'm earning this. I'm never ever going to earn more in my life. This is unbelievable money. <laughs> did you ever ever think like that? Well, the funny thing is I was, um, before I signed my f uh, contract, so I was, I think I was 15 or 16, I started working as a, as a dishwasher um, at a restaurant, local restaurant in, in Breda because I wanted just to make a little bit of money at least. For they pay you three euros an hour. This, uh, yeah, so as, I worked, I've I, I trained Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then we played on Saturday, and I worked on the Wednesday evening from six till midnight. Sunday evening from six to midnight, and I just worked because I wanted to go to the to town on a Saturday night and just have a little bit of money. And I, I remember I got just three hundred, maybe three hundred fifty euro every month, and I was so happy with that. <laughs> and you know could have gone to McDonald's and, and treat my friends and uh, treat Ludi and you know it's just oh, hold on you earned the money I went to McDonald's and then you wasted it on well not wasted uh, it. not everything but obviously like sometimes you know we had like in Breda was a bit of the the spot when you on a Saturday night the in front of the McDonald's there were always a lot of people there and it was a bit of the spot chilling there and you know I went there as well uh, trying to be all tough I remember <laughs> but yeah it was it was it was great and i think i think then i started to realize how you know important money can be but it's not the most important thing it's not the driving force i can i can tell that by the way you talk about it but if you had to pick something that really takes you the extra mile what is it is it a memory is it somebody is it is it it's, it's my it's my family my ki my my wife and my kids that's the most important thing i think um over the years i've had plenty of tough times, tough moments, being under pressure, being criticized. And I think when I'm coming home, see my kids smiling, see my wife and everyone is healthy, then nothing matters to me in, in the world. And um, I think that's the that's the driving force for me. And that's why I do it all for. Your childhood memory, your favorite childhood memory, what would that be? I would say uh, <laughs> Disneyland. Yeah, uh, Disneyland is, is something uh, is something you know very special. I think um, I like Disney movies, the classics, not the real, real classics, but like Lion King, mm -hmm. um, those kind of classics, and um, Aladdin. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Disney Disneyland fan, and my kids as well. And, I'm just, I love to take them there. I love to see them smile, obviously, enjoying every bit of it, even if it's with the character they come to, you know, having breakfast with and seeing them so so happy makes my day. And um, it's just great. When was the first time you went there? I think I was around I was seven, eight. Um, I went with uh, my brother and my mom, um, a friend of my mom and, and, and a little little friend of us back then, I think a school friend. And it was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you do? Where did you go? Oh. So we stayed like you have them small hotels, villages around the Disneyland hotel, uh, Disneyland per Paris. And uh, I remember it was like a, a wild, a wild west kind of uh, team bungalow, something. Mm -hmm. And we slept on bunk beds, and it was probably the best best time I had at at, at, at that time. And I remember it obviously as the Till this day, and uh, after that, we didn't went too much to Disneyland because it's pretty expensive. <laughs> but um, I hear you're going soon. I'm I'm going yeah soon. Plan to go soon as well, and um, I just I just enjoy it. And um, but also I went with my wife as well, just me and her, and begin beginning stage um, of of my relationship. My Your wife, idea, obviously. Our our idea. All oh, right, and. Uh, it was it was amazing. It was um, unbelievable. We got drunk in the hotel, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was fantastic. And um, yeah, I loved it every bit of it. 
How would you like to be remembered? Oh, that's a, that's a difficult question, but you know, as a maybe as a legend of Liverpool, yeah, I think that's uh, obviously at the moment that's something that comes to my mind. You know, I want to achieve great things, great things here, amazing things here, and um, we have a fantastic squad. We have everything that you know. We have all the tools, basically. Um, obviously, we have to we have to do it, and for us. We have uh, we have a team in the league that's pretty good as well, that you know um, is doing fantastic, and we 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 matching them at the moment, and uh, we we will see what the hap what happens. And I just want to give everything for this club. You know, they they went all out for me to get me, and I just want to give everything for them and and make sure. Uh, and hopefully make sure we're gonna we're gonna achieve great things. You said that you walk Anfield sometimes is like like a museum because you, you see all these legends and mm -hmm. uh, you get to talk to them. You like yeah, no, definitely. Like I remember the the game on the so before I started training and Liverpool played Leicester and I was at the stadium in the boardroom and I met so many legends and 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 um, you know great players that played for the for a beautiful club and it's just it's just something special and I think also as Liverpool as a club I think when you play for the club you know you're always going to be welcome they're always going to be ready for you because it's you know you, you've been part of the family you're always going to be in I think that's also one of the reasons why I definitely want to play for this club there was another 10 things I wanted to go through <laughs> with you but I think it's time for to let you go thank you very much for you're your time you're very welcome absolutely pleasure you're very welcome thanks